Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you all to worship this morning on the fourth Sunday at the Pentecost, proper eight, that it's called on the old calendar. It is good to be with you all. You want to come say hi, Thomas? Yeah. Come here. Say hi. What you got there? You got fruit snacks in a cup? I got, I got coffee. Oh, you got coffee? Yeah, I got coffee. Can I have some coffee? Thank you. It's very good coffee. Coffee with fruit snacks. Man, that'll make your lights. The colors will speak to you, right? Uh, just a few announcements before we start worship this morning. Okay. Um, uh, mainly prayer requests for you all to remember, especially. Uh, we want to remember Doug Horner. He ruptured a major tendon in his knee and needs to have surgery. As someone who ruptured an Achilles tendon, I can tell you, when you rupture any kind of tendon, it is painful and the recovery is very long. So we want to keep Priscilla and Jessica and Connor and Doug, the whole Horner family, I'm sorry, Horner family in our prayers this day um, and for the next coming week. So um, also Lane Bennett um, has been moved from War Memorial Hospital in Berkeley Springs down to Canterbury in Shepherdstown for some rehab therapy. Um, the if you'd like to send her a card and please do um even try to give her a phone call she um, um especially if you know her real well um she would greatly appreciate that especially since they can't have visitors right now um it would be really good to to call to send a message to let her know that you are thinking about her and praying for her and yes and on that note Catherine Beam is home um, from her stay at Shepherdstown, Canterbury. So um, you can give her a call. She would love that. But she's doing pretty well. She just has some slow recovery um, after falling and breaking some bones So in her posterior end. I believe that's all I have for is there that. Coffee? Uh, let us begin with our confession and forgiveness. It's found on page one of your worship bulletin as you can find in the top link in the video description. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, you're going to die for us, and for his sake, God, because it's all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our hymn this morning is hymn 592 in your ELW, Just As I Am Without One Plea, or page 12 in your hymn document.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace. In your words of justice and mercy, reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Continue with the lessons. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 28. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to his, this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Here ends the reading. The psalm for today is Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever, and you have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your life forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading.
according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I asked Matt, I miss preaching on my stool. So I said to Matt, can I, can I preach on my stool today? He said, yeah, you can do whatever you want. So, and he said, what are you preaching about? And I, he, oh, he said, fireside chat, huh? And I said, yeah, fireside chat. So we are on week three of uh, St. Matthew's uh, Gospel, chapter 10. We've uh, been hearing uh, about what it means to be a disciple. Again, St. Matthew writes uh, his Gospel is all about Jesus as teacher and what it means to be church, what it means to be a disciple and follow this teacher, Jesus. So his audience, of course, is also his community, but it is also us. Us. We are um, like all other uh, of the Gospels, always an audience that Matthew is thinking of, an audience yet again, yet um, to be, that will hear these words. So chapter 10 is called the mission discourse, meaning that the focus of chapter 10 has been about mission and sending folks out who are followers of Jesus. And it's Jesus who is sending them out. So we've heard about um, the 12 apostles who in the midst of Jesus' ministry among them, he's sending out, giving them authority um, to heal and to care for people and to teach. And these are all important things that Jesus has given them the authority to do that they need to do. We also get to hear about how they're to go out, which is, of course, um, depending upon the folks that they visit, but also being aware that they aren't always going to be accepted and what that means for what they are to do then when they aren't accepted. And then we hear about, too, uh, how... Um, Jesus knows all of these hardships that are about to happen to them, to them. Um, that they are going to be sent out to do this important work, but even the people that they think will accept them will not. And he's warning them to be aware of what they're being called to do and to be shrewd about what they're doing and thoughtful. So these are all things we hear, and then we get to today's um, reading which sums up the discourse which talks about um, how they are to think about um, being welcomed and the people that they're welcome to. So a lot of times when we hear this snippet, what I just read all by itself, we think that it's us learning about how we should welcome others, but it's really not. If you read it in the continuity of the section, it's about what we are to expect when we are welcomed by someone. So that's a really different way of looking at it. It's not how we are to welcome someone, it's how we are to be welcomed. So on that note, why is it that we are so scared of evangelism? Now, many people have asked that question over and over and over. There's books about it. Um, whenever that's one of the buzzwords is brought up, people start getting a little uncomfortable with it. 
why are we scared of evangelism? Which is also connected to mission. What is our mission exactly as Christians? What are we to be doing? We've kind of had some of the answers to that over these past three weeks about what it is we're supposed to be doing. Um, these are the things that make us uncomfortable or we think mission, based on the history of our faith, mission, we usually think is a thing that happens when we send someone out um, to another country and they tell people about Jesus, they uh, are going to a place where no one has ever heard of Jesus and they need to tell people about Jesus. That's, I think, what we think of when we think of mission. But we have gotten better and are realizing, too, that mission isn't just about sending people out of our country. Mission is about right in our own country, that there are people, um, and even today especially, that haven't heard about Jesus, that we need to share and tell about Jesus. Um, but it's still scary. We don't readily jump into wanting to be on the mission committee. Do we even have mission committees? Um, we do have, um, I know that we think about and think in different ways of fellowship. Um, and we think in um, social ministries, which are all things that turn into evangelism and mission in a way. And it sounds silly, but they start in a certain kind of way which is doing things that invite people to start relationships. And that's good. That's part of mission and evangelism. But I think to get back to that one question, why are we so scared of talking about evangelism and mission? It's because, um, maybe I'll speak personally. My understanding of mission and evangelism was not colored very well. When I think of mission and evangelism growing up, and even till now, I think a great deal about people hitting people or shoving the Bible in people's faces or proof texting texts from the Bible that aren't always so helpful. And again, yes, there are things that the Bible tells us that Jesus has said that prophets have said that are hard to hear. I understand that. But more often than not, the mission or evangelism of sharing God's word becomes hurtful and harmful. And that is what I think of when I go to evangelism and mission. Now, the funny part is, that's not my denomination. When I think of those folks who do that, who use God's word harmfully, I can't really think of many, there are some Lutherans who do that. So instead of also becoming an us versus them piece, instead of an us versus them, what I want to say is I think we need to think about how we each personally understand mission and evangelism and how it's absolutely 100% meaningful and important for what we do as Christians. Jesus called us to do it. That's what we've spent three weeks hearing about how he called the disciples, um, the apostles, but that he also calls the church to do this meaningful work. Uh, it didn't get... Um, totally perfected when the golden age of the church happened and there were people filling the pews and because we obviously know that's changed a little bit. So the mission is still on. And I would argue the mission is even more important now than ever. And the mission of what we're called to do is to tell people about Jesus and Jesus' love. Now, again, this all sounds simple, and you're saying, Pastor, I have known that if you are a lifelong Christian since the time I sat in the pew, since I went to Sunday school. Yes, I get that too. Me too. Me too. That I'm supposed to tell people that Jesus loves them. Okay. 
So how many of us do that? How many of us are super comfortable about talking to other people about this amazing gift of Jesus' love? We're not. And I would argue it's because we're scared of being those folks that hammer people over the head with it. But the reality is that Jesus' love is good and genuine and doesn't hit people over the head and harm them. Love at its best cares and listens and creates relationships. What we hear today in this very, very small piece of scripture, I had three verses to read to you today. I don't know when I read the shortest gospel that small last, probably three years ago when we did it last then. What we're offered there is a promise. What he's saying there is those that are welcoming you have welcomed me. And if you read between the lines, what that means is you, you are not alone when you are being sent out to do this work. Jesus has called us to this mission. I might just keep saying mission and evangelism so we get used to the word instead of being like, oh, I'm just going to say mission, 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 mission. Jesus has called us to this mission because he promises to be with us. The beauty of um, Matthew's gospel, the very last verse, I'm with you always to the end of the age. He promises to be with us. And here he does, right here in the midst of sending the disciples out, reminding them that when you go out, them, the disciples, them, the church of Matthew's time, them, us, that I am with you. And when people welcome you, they're welcoming me. I'm not leaving you alone to do this work of telling people about my love. I'm always going to be with you to do it because it's that important of work. And it's so important because people need to know about this love. I want you to take the time this week to think about this. Reframe and rethink, like if you're a journaler, write it down. If you just sit with your coffee, I mean, you can do this right after church even, because I know some of you are enjoying some coffee while you're watching this. Think about what scares you about sharing your faith and why. Now remember, my other thing is always too, you're sharing your faith even if you're not directly talking about it. Now, how do you do that when you're stuck in your home, right? Okay, little, little, little digress a quick second before I remind you what I want you to do this week. How do we share this when we aren't at home? Well, my friends, you right now are watching this or listening in. Those of you listening in, you can call someone who you haven't talked to in a while to check how they're doing. That's love. That's evangelism. You can share with them that you listen in and share the phone number. Those of you who are on the internet, you can share this video with someone. You can send it through a Facebook message. You can just share it on your page. You can just like it. You can love it. And the joy of technology is when you do those things, other people see it. If you um, are not a Facebook person but still do web uh, email, go to YouTube and send this link to someone you know. That's a way to share and invite. And it's even easier right now than doing it in person, right? I mean, that's the fun thing about technology. It, like, puts a little space between you and the next person. Right now, we're kind of in an awesome place to be able to do evangelism just by clicking share or like. Think about this week why you're scared of talking about your faith. I know everyone hates this. But role play it in your head. What would it look like to invite someone? What would make, if you were in the opposite position, what would make you feel comfortable 
to do to go visit or talk about your faith with someone else? What would feel non-threatening to you? If someone came up to you and, and started talking to you about Jesus, what would engage you in the conversation? What would make you feel comfortable about asking questions? I want you to think about why is this faith important to you? And if it's that good and that important and that meaningful for you, don't you want other people to know about it too? That's what we're called to do. That's the mission. The mission of being a disciple is talking about Jesus. It's about sharing his love. Sometimes that looks like, just as I've told you, being a nice person and letting someone go through a door before you. Sometimes that looks like sending a card to one of our shut-ins. Sometimes that looks like picking up the phone and talking to someone who you haven't talked to in a while. Sometimes that's learning about new ministries of other congregations. Sometimes that's taking your resources and sharing them with a neighbor. Sometimes that's um, learning about new opportunities to help and sharing that with people who need to hear it. Sometimes it's actually talking about what your faith means and talking about how you've been at church all these years or talking about even now what you miss. Like telling someone, you know, I really miss being with my church family. And it's because I really miss gathering around the table and being elbow to elbow and having communion. It's because I miss watching the kids run up for the children's sermon. It's because I miss hearing music and receiving the peace that comes from it. That's evangelism. Take some time this week to think about what scares you about evangelism and mission, and then think about how could it not be scary? If you can move to that next piece of maybe enacting some of the how can it not be scary, good. If you do it, tell me about it, share it. Again, mission and evangelism. Do you feel that peace washing over you from the music? Sharing God's love is what we're called to do. That's mission. Do it by now calling someone, sending letters. Do it now by hitting like. Do it by sending the link to someone you know. That's all important and all what we're supposed to do. May you remember as a disciple that that's your mission. When you are welcomed by someone, when the conversation ensues, when someone um, wants to talk to you again or comes, wants to come with you to church when we get to do that again, know that you were not alone in that. That God was with you, that Jesus had promised to be with you, that the Spirit gave you the words, gave you the idea. That promise is what keeps us going and what helps us do what God has called us to do. May you be an evangelist, a missionary this week. May you do it in small ways, and may you do it in big ways. And may it be so. Amen. Our hymn of the day is a beautiful hymn that I learned from being here. It's ELW 719. It's Where Cross the Crowded Ways of Life or page 13 in your hymn document.
Let us confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O oh God, the Holy One of blessing, send your spirit of tender might to your church and to all its leaders. Especially we pray for Bishop Eaton, Bishop Regal, all pastors and deacons of the church, for our lay leaders, especially our respective councils, who made difficult decisions this week. Strengthen the believers who cannot assemble for worship. Guide the church's use of technology and make yourself known to those who have no access to such materials. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor that we may lead a peaceable life of integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially to the President of the United States, to the Governor of West Virginia, and to all those who make a minister judge our laws and help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of creation, continue your care for the earth. Where there was fire or flooding, drought or storm, bring renewal of the land. Bless our farmers and ranchers and our migrant workers as they toil in the sun to harvest our food. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of compassion, heal the sick, embrace the fearful, visit the millions who are suffering from the coronavirus, protect us from another wave of the disease, uphold health care workers and medical researchers as they work on our behalf, assist the unemployed in finding a job. Show us how to provide safe housing and daily food for the homeless in our nation and around the world. And be with all those who we name aloud or silently in our hearts. We also lift up in prayer Doug Corner, Elaine Bennett, the Harner family, Catherine Bean. We pray for a vaccine and effective treatment of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, Holy One of hope, sustain those who cannot endure their suffering, but are led only to despair. Pour your grace into their hearts. O God, Holy One eternal, we praise you for the lives of the faithful departed, both famous and the forgotten. We celebrate and remember the lives of all of our saints, especially we remember St. Peter and Paul, Catherine, John Mason Neal, and St. Thomas, all who we commemorate this week. At the end of all things, bring to yourself all your treasured people to abide in your presence forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers of God and those desires too deep for our words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We take this time for a brief uh, pause for our uh, offering and also for a musical interlude. I think you might like it. If you know the refrain, please sing along at home. I bring my music.
There are loved ones who in glory Who knit one you often miss When you close your earthly story Will you join them in their bliss? Will the circle be unbroken By and by, Lord, by and by Is a better Days of travel, not the cord of wondrous love. Pointed to the dying Savior, now they dwell with Him above. Will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by. Is a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. heaven when you sing with childish boy do you love the hymns they taught you or the songs of earth your choice will the circle be unbroken by and by lord by and by is a better home awaiting in the sky lord in the Picture happy gatherings all on the fireside long ago. And think of tearful partings when they left you here below. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? Is a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the by one their seats are empty, one by one they went away. Now the family is parted, will it be complete one day? Will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by, it's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? Is a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought light into being. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. By your word you called your people to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give, we give you, you thanks, thanks and praise. And praise. Through Jesus Christ, your word make flesh. You speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness. Call us to witness 
forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive Give us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements before we go. My um, iPad, as it so famously does, changed one of my prayer petitions. I couldn't understand what it autocorrected the name. Uh, one of the people we are commemorating this week is Catherine Winkworth, uh, mm -hmm. who died in 1878. And we're also, I also said his name correctly, John Mason Neal. They're both hymn translators. So I'm sorry about that. I love it when my iPad decides to just change all kinds of random words. Um, just a few other announcements. Again, thank you to our special musicians for making the music for our live streams possible, for our worship services. We really appreciate it. Um, an update for the mustard seed, as I said last week, uh, Miss Christy Costello is leaving us after 15 years working in the center, 14 in the classroom, one year as our director. Um, so we want to keep our mustard seed and keep Christy, Christy in our prayers as they make a uh, transition um, into a different path. Um, we also want to keep our board in our prayers. Um, as they make some pretty tough decisions and do it in impossible circumstances and um, trying to figure out where the Spirit is leading us. So we have a meeting Wednesday night, um, so please do keep us in your prayers with that. Um, everything else at the mustard seed, the kids are safe, they're eating, they're learning, they're growing, so that is good. So keep them in your prayers as well. Um, our councils are meeting on Tuesday night. St. Thomas is meeting at 7 p.m. St. John's at 8 p.m. to decide um, where, what we will be doing for the month of July. Um, difficult decisions, so please uh, keep them in your prayers as they, um, none of them expected to be making these types of decisions when they accepted the nomination, so. Um, so please also check Facebook yes. for updates and, and things like that, and our voicemail at St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we will we'll try to get the word out as soon as we get decisions made to you all um, with that. Um, for St. John's, your newsletter, we're going to mail them out Wednesday or Thursday. We're waiting to see what the council decides uh, before we go and have to mail out like three different mailings. So um, expect that stuff coming to you. It's also for the hymns for July, too, if they're needed. Um, so just look for that in your mailboxes later this week. Um, table talk. We have a table talk this Thursday night. Um, we're going to do it on Facebook Live and on Zoom, I think. Who knows? Because I'm not, I'm just learning how to use Zoom. If you all think that I'm an expert at Zoom, I'm not. I, um, Emma Felici, I think, knows more than me, and she's five years old, and I've actually had to ask her some stuff. So um, we want to. So be on the lookout for your emails. Sign up for our email list if you are interested uh, or on your Facebook. We'll try to get that stuff out to you all, how to connect. Um, next Sunday, um, we'll be using uh, a different phone service to all my phone callers. The service we've been using is not always, doesn't always work. It cuts us out, so we are going with a different platform, a little bit more stable. Um, so there will be a new phone number that you need to call into. Um, if um, you should be getting it, um, uh, it'll be an email, and also we're going to be doing some mailings too. If you don't get it and you need it, um, message Pastor Diane or I. If you need a one eight hundred number, because the, net, the other the new service we have, while it's a much better service, it's really expensive for the toll free. We have an option though that we can do toll free. So please let me know if you need that 
phone number for a toll-free number to call in. Uh, and that's only if you, if you don't have long distance. If you have long distance, use that because you're paying for it. So let's use it for that. But if you need a toll-free number because you don't, uh, let us know and we will get you that new phone number. Um, I believe that's it. Anything else? No, that's for, no, maybe oh, that's uh, Wednesdays. Um, Tasha, Diane, and I are team, um, are not going to be doing Vespers because of there is VBS with St. John's one week, and I have a mustard seed board meeting on Wednesday night. So we're taking at least the month of July off, and probably August too, because we're going to be away for a couple weeks in August. So the whole conference is Pastor Christine's. Yes, and uh, the whole conference, um, we're, we got all kinds of vacations going on. Um, I, I'm going to try to give out some resources for some daily prayer for you all. Um, so check your emails for that. I'm, that's one of my projects this week. So uh, for you all to use. And nothing else. But there will be chapel at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. So get the kids or if you are a kid at heart. Um, that's for you, Sammy Cable. Yes. Let's see. Let's conclude them with the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn this day is Lord of Glory. You have brought us as ELW 707, or it's page 14 in your worship packet. <laughs>
Now for everyone's favorite part. Got Wiggles. And he danced it up for you during the Kyrie. You like dancing all of a sudden? Ooh. Ooh, oops, that hurt. Maybe. Oh, wait. It was good to see you all today. We hope you have a very good week. Yep, join us for Table Talk on Thursday night. Really excited about that. We're talking about baptism and the uh, small catechism, so um, please join us. Look forward to it. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stay healthy, stay home, stay safe if you Wear can. Wear a mask.